I am Dale Lumlino from Synopsys. I'm glad to be here talking about Fusion Compiler. So let's start with the Fusion Compiler design platform. Uh, you see here on the left side, uh, Design Compiler and IC Compiler 2. And we used those in uh, earlier quicks, earlier uh, implementations of the ARM cores with different technologies. Here, we're taking the Fusion Compiler path, and that fuses inside the tool, even, fuses what was Compile Ultra and, and PlaceOpt are now Compile Fusion. So there's Fusion even within Fusion Compiler. Uh, there are Fusion interfaces, uh, both at the top and at the, at the bottom. Starting at the beginning with uh, DFT, you have uh, TestMax. And through Test Fusion, we're bringing in, uh, inserting test, like the compressors, at the very beginning of the flow into the RTL. So the initial synthesis takes advantage of all that and can see the, the compressors. And the placer can see the compressors from the very beginning. At the very end of the flow, we have uh, several fusions, um, including Primetime, Star RC. Those are brought into the tool, into Fusion Compiler directly in design. And also uh, ICV and Red Hawk. Uh, Red Hawk bringing in IR drop. ICV, of course, being uh, DRC on LVS. So I think that's enough for the overview. Uh, moving on, uh, getting into Fusion Compiler, uh, some just high-level advantages of Fusion Compiler single data model. So it's uh, synthesis and place and route are now using the same data model. Uh, common engines throughout the flow. So again, synthesis and, and place and route are using the same timer, using the same extractor. You get consistency throughout the flow and convergence. And it's all based on the golden, golden sign-off backbone. So the timer is based off of prime time. And you get the consistency there through the, again, inside of Fusion Compiler and then also into sign off. And that consistency and, and convergence is realized in benefits in your design. Uh, faster synthesis, better QOR, lower power, smaller area. So those benefits show up in your, in your design. So what makes uh, Fusion Compiler different? Uh, I mentioned the unified, uh, the fusion of the compile fusion and, and PlaceOpt. And through the unified shell, now you're running both synthesis and place and route in the same shell. And that gives you advantage in that you can bring what was a place and route feature into synthesis. Uh, the placement and legalizer are now are available in synthesis. Uh, placement was earlier, but now also legalization. Uh, CCD, clock and data optimization, those are brought forward at, to the beginning of the flow. And wire synthesis, so you can see the effects of the, the 5LPE layer stack. You can see that at the very beginning of the flow also. And into the back end, or into the, well, my favorite part, place and route, uh, you get structuring, resynthesis. When you have a, a, a timing path pop up later in the flow, you can use these features, which are traditionally um, synthesis features. Now you can use them in place and route to resynthesize that path and meet timing. These are just a, a few of the key features in Fusion Compiler. I mean, there are lots of features. Um, but these are important ones for ARM cores and 5LPE. So let me start with uh, the skewing, useful skew. Um, there are two aspects here. Uh, on the bottom in the pink is the memory skewing. And I'll cover that in more detail. And CCD everywhere in yellow. And I will also, also cover that in, in more detail. Um, in the darker blue, we have placement attractions. These are floor plan independent. So they're actually built into the tool, into the set HPC options command. And I'll, I'll get into those details. Uh, layer binning and NDRs. Those are important for the, the 13 metal stack. And I'll also cover that one in more detail. And this, the fast synthesis and timing driven restructuring. Uh, actually, those, those just seem to work. I've not had to mess with those. The data path has is, is worked. But I'm speaking for the alpha collateral. We've, we were just now transitioning to the beta. 
And of course, that ups the, the frequency target. So those may play more of a factor in, in my next run. We'll see. Uh, Sadir mentioned the DTCO, Design Technology Co-Optimization. And the importance there is to give us early access, uh, starting with PDK 0.2, I think it was. Uh, the early PDK is 0 0.5, 0 0.9. Um, now we're at 1.0 and actually moving on from there. So we get to see the early development of the process and how that translates into the tool and also into the libraries. Similarly with the library development, uh, we started with just a few you know, tens of cells and hundreds of cells and maybe a thousand cells uh, per library. So we get to see the development of, this, of that. And all that feeds into the tool. So we get early access to those, those features. Um, for example, setting the legalization. Uh, we can see where the pins uh, collide between cells. So you get the spacing properly uh, between cells. Uh, the routing, get the, the proper spacing and the routing on the pins. Um, and that gets captured in the form of a set technology command. So it actually gets captured in the Fusion Compiler tool itself for Hercules and 5LPE. Uh, Fusion Compiler, as we're just talking about Fusion Compiler, uh, this is a recent press release for the Neoverse N1. So it's just showing some of the recent work that we've, we've uh, worked with, uh, with uh, ARM. The uh, previous one, of course, was with Samsung for the DTCO. And here, the, the real benefit for, for me, for me running Hercules, is I, I leverage the learnings from Neoverse because there's a lot of similarities between cores. Um, and the techniques that work on one core often work on the next. And so we, we definitely leverage the, the quick from Neoverse N1 into Hercules. Speaking of Hercules, uh, just a few statistics for you. Um, just a default configuration, uh, just what you might find typical for the average user. Uh, we're using a 13 metal stack. I'll, I'll actually comment on that in a little bit. Uh, routing in metal 2 through 11. And highlight the ARM POP IP. So as uh, Sadir mentioned, we're using the 7.5 track, which is the FAST, the high performance library, um, as opposed to the 6 track, which is the low power. So you might use the 6 track on an A55, um, but here's, this is the big CPU versus the little CPU, uh, 7.5 versus 6 track. Uh, this library has three uh, voltage, or three uh, thresholds, RVT, LVT, SLVT, and two channel lengths. Um, and also let me emphasize the FCI RAMs. Those are designed for the ARM cores and tuned for the ARM cores. So when you use those, you get, they're well matched to the RTL. Where you need a, a fast input or a fast output, they're, they're tuned for that. Um, so we like to use the, the pop IP there. Uh, the PVT corners, actually, there's, there's, we're adding one more as we're transitioning from the alpha to the beta collateral. Uh, we're adding the, a second setup corner, which is uh, cell dominated. So this, this TT corner uh, for setup is, is wire dominated. And when you have the mix of wire and cell dominated corners, you get the best optimization. You get a good balance. And just another plug here for test max in that we're inserting uh, DFT at the beginning so that synthesis can, can see it through the flow. This is collaboration and where it results. Uh, the collaboration between Synopsys, ARM, and Samsung is captured in QUIC. And QUIC is a set of scripts, but it's also a set of tool commands. And two, T, two key tool commands our set technology, which is capturing the settings for the Samsung 5 LPE, and set HPC options. Uh, HPC is a high performance cores, and that's specific to each ARM core. And so we have a set HPC options for Hercules. And that sets some of the data path settings uh, to optimize properly, uh, sets up some of the useful SKU, which I'll cover. And I, also, I mentioned also earlier the placement attractions. And so we'll get into that. So these are some of my favorite features. I mean, Fusion Compiler has lots of features. 
But I think these are the, a few of the fe features that make the biggest difference on Hercules and 5LPE. So we'll go, go through them one by one. Starting with macro skewing, uh, as I mentioned, useful skew is important in, in ARM CPUs and certainly in Hercules also. And so the set HPC options command has set skew macros commands internally. And so we've simplified it with a single command to skew all the macros for you accordingly. Now, of course, this is assuming that you're using uh, 5LPE with uh, ARM POP FCI RAMs. Um, if you don't, if you choose to use your own libraries or some other library, you'll have to do this work yourself. Uh, and here's an example, just the set skew macros command. Uh, some of the RAM banks want to be skewed to the inputs. A few want to be skewed to the outputs. And I think there was one bank that wants to be balanced across both input and output. So the macro skewing feeds into CCD everywhere. Uh, those are both uh, useful skew. But CCD everywhere is part of the optimization. And it starts at the very beginning. I keep saying the word beginning, maybe my favorite word here. Uh, at compile fusion. So prior to CTS, you start setting uh, directives for CTS. It starts setting targets. And with those assumptions that it can meet those targets, it, it starts to skew the, the design and optimize accordingly. And there's a tight loop. You'll see, if you look in the log carefully, you'll see a couple iterations, two, three iterations of uh, delay optimization. Then you'll see an iteration of CCD, CCD kick in. So they, they go back and forth, um, optimizing accordingly. And like I said, that feeds into CTS in the clock up step. It uh, gives directives to CTS for targets for the useful SKU, and then follows up in, in route opt, similarly with uh, iterations of CCD and, and data path optimization. It actually extends into sign off opt. In, uh, well, sign off opt is a command, but it's also in primetime ECO, uh, primetime can operate both on clock and data paths. So it's effectively doing CCD even into sign off. CCD has gotten better um, in, in some early, earlier incarnations of CCD. Uh, we had a endpoint based. Um, so if you look at some of the older versions of ICC2, for example, it's operating on the entire path. Um, that's somewhat limiting for optimization. It may not be able to achieve that by operating on a path. So the new arc-based version of CCD operates on each timing arc. So each cell and each net is a timing arc. And CCD can adjust those accordingly. Um, and it can find common paths. So if, let's say the, the, the two flops at the bottom there on the left uh, needed to be skewed one way or the other you might, arc-based would skew the, the buffer just above those two flops. So you could find that common point between the flops and skew that point by using arc-based. Uh, this is also applicable to multi-source CTS or the mesh, mesh appropriate uh, version of CTS. That, that it works with that too. Latency aware placement. This is an example of migrating into the tool. So if you look at one of the older versions of Quick, you'll see a lot of set clock latency commands and uh, balance points. And that was to create useful SKU for the ICGs, in particular the architectural ICGs. Because during CTS, they move up to the very top of the tree, and that's very stressing for the enable timing. Uh, so in Quick, we have a scripted solution, or previously. Now, there's a tool, native tool command, or actually tool setting, that implements ICG skewing for the enable timing. Uh, there's two app options, and actually we've fine-tuned it specifically for Hercules. Uh, there's, there's two components to the latency aware. One is the timing estimate, and the other is the clumping. So it tries to, to group the ICG with its flops. And we found that that was uh, too much. So we disabled the, the clumping portion. So it's just the timing estimation that we're using for Hercules in this new feature. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see the comparison. Uh, one is a scripted solution in, on the top line, and the bottom line is the new feature. 
Uh, it's almost equivalent across the board, um, certainly within 1%. And the big difference is ease of use. In that, you know, in the scripted solution, even though we're sharing it with you, uh, it's, it's a good bit of work to come up with that and some multiple runs and trial and error. Uh, that's all simplified now in the form of two app options and nearly equivalent results. So that's migration into the tool for Hercules design. Uh, this is also a migration into the tool. Uh, we give guidance to the placement. Historically, we've used bounds, and bounds have locations. So that was floor plan dependent. Now we're using placement attractions. That's a new command. And it's built into the set HPC options command. So it's, it's, it's a mega command. This is how we referred to it internally. Um, and that, what that does is it, it says this module A wants to be close to module B. And so it pulls them together. And so what happens is you'll see at the initial placement is consistent all the way through the flow to the final placement. Um, without this guidance, you might see uh, module A, module B pulling closer together as the timing became critical. And the, each iteration of the placement tried to pull them together. The problem is that moving them throughout the flow in the middle of the flow means you over-optimize something and under-optimize something else. So getting them placed at the beginning with these placement attractions is key. And the other important aspect is it's delivered to you in the form of set HPC options, this command that's built into the tool tuned for Hercules. From a technology aspect now, a uh, similar aspect is, is placement, but this is uh, clumping versus spreading. Um, also built into the, into the tool in through the set HPC options. But we found a, a balance of clumping, uh, so the max density command, and spreading it through the max utilization. Uh, it's a little harder to see, but uh, what I highlighted here are the low density areas where you can see congestion has been operating on it, the, the blue colors. So that's low density. And just showing that it's, it's consistent through the flow. So right at the very beginning, you see the same congestion all the way through the end. Uh, and again, this is built into the tool, set HPC options, delivered through Quick. So technology, layer stack. Layer stack's important. Uh, we started this project with a 14 metal layer stack, and the metal 12 and metal 13 are great. They're very low resistance, and so we were using them for all of our timing critical nets. Then we got feedback from customers that the 13 metal stack was more prevalent, so we switched. Um, and now we effectively had two, two layer bins, we call them. Uh, you can see the 1x stack uh, for the upper layers and then the higher resistance lower layers, and that's fairly typical for advanced processes. Uh, but we, we now lost the most beneficial layers for the low resistance, for the most timing critical nets. We put very few nets up there, but we still need that capability. So what we did was in addition to layer binning and layer promotion, which, which moves the critical nets up to those favorable layers, we added NDRs. And this is a feature in the tool uh, optimize NDR is if you search your app options for optimize NDR, you'll find it. Uh, but we, what we did is we created a third layer bin by doubling the width of the middle layers. And that cuts the resistance in half and gives us that third metal bin for the most timing critical nets. And so this is all about recognizing timing critical nets at the very beginning of the flow and getting them optimized appropriately. Expanding on the NDR trick, we used uh, a, an additional scripting technique. So the optimized NDR occurs in, in Compile Fusion, but we're moving this up to the very beginning because we recognize certain path groups are always timing critical between them. And so for those interfaces, we applied NDRs to those nets. And we didn't see a, a big change. Uh, Mostly what we saw was a 2% reduction in power, in leakage power. 
But that's certainly indica an indication that the tool is not working as hard, is not having to use as many um, SLVT cells. It, it can use the lower drive cells um, and saves power. So that was a good change. Now, moving back into the fusion aspects, if you remember the, the picture at the beginning, I'll go back and I'll show it again at the end. But here's the Red Hawk portion. Uh, traditionally, you might go outside of the tool, uh, go through extraction, through prime time, generate some files, run Red Hawk, feed it back into the tool. That's a long path that it takes time. Um, but now we can bring Red Hawk into the tool. And this gives you access to the Red Hawk analysis that you can do the, the IR drop analysis, you can do the IR, the PG augmentation from Red Hawk that can be incorporated into Fusion Compiler. Um, and there's further advancements. We're doing IR drop aware CCD, IR drop aware ECO. Those are uh, forthcoming enhancements in the next couple SP releases. And so it's being further integrated into the Fusion Compiler. Uh, this, again, this gives you the faster turnaround and gives you access to more accurate timing because you can see the IR drop in the timing. And I just have one quick slide. Actually, there's a, the next session following this one right here is the Red Hawk synopsis, uh, ANSYS synopsis session. So I'm just going to flash this slide up there for Hercules. This is a Hercules design showing the static IR drop and the dynamic IR drop. Um, that's mentioned that we use the max power for the, the IR drop optimization. And then, of course, we use the traditional dry stone activity for the IR drop analysis. But uh, again, this will be covered in more detail in, in the very next session. Another fusion. Uh, again, this is in sign-off portion. This is bringing in ICV, IC validator. And in this, this slide, you're just talking about the live DRC checking. And the advantage here is now you are using the sign-off tool to see the DRCs in your place and route results. Uh, it's not based on the tech file that you might see the DRCs within Fusion Compiler. This is based on ICV with the full sign-off run set. So these are the real DRCs need to be fixed. And the other thing is it's fast. Because it's working on a small window, uh, it's, it's run, it runs fast. It's not doing, having to do the entire design to find the DRCs. It can iteratively work in these small windows within Fusion Compiler. Uh, and if you're like me, uh, I'm place and route centric personally. Um, and I'm familiar with the browser and Fusion Compiler, so it's a familiar working environment. So I don't, I can run Fusion Compiler but get the, all the advantages of ICV. If you're an ICV expert, then you're ahead of me. The next level uh, bringing ICV in is the Explorer DRC. This is primarily for integration. As we take the Hercules block, for example, up into the DSU or the DSU up into the chip level, uh, you may find some integration errors like uh, overlapping pins. And what the Explorer DRC is, is it quickly finds those and through the heat map, you can identify them. Um, and that's, I think, all, all that I have for say, to say for that one. So just in summary, uh, let me cover the, the key aspects that I thought were important, at least my personal list, and what we have in Fusion Compiler for those. So we all know ARM CPUs are, 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 have useful SKU built in. And for that, in Fusion Compiler, we have the setHPC options command, which sets the SKU macros, so it SKUs the RAMs for you. And then CCD everywhere throughout the entire flow, including the new ARC-based version that gives you the fine-grained uh, optimization. ICGs can be a challenge, uh, the enable timing. As the ICGs move to the top of the tree, the enable timing becomes critical. And for that, we have, uh, historically, we use the, the quick scripts, but now we have a new feature, latency aware placement in Fusion Compiler. Uh, module placement, again, we have the placement attractions, and those are built into the tool through the set HPC options. 
And the advantage of that is you can use fewer bounds. You may still need a few bounds. I think we still have a few bounds in the quick scripts, but they're fewer than we were using before. In the, like, for example, the, the Aries N1. Uh, talked about the cell density and the congestion. Um, those, are, those are in the tool in the set HPC options again. The layer stack, uh, the, we have the native features for layer promotion and uh, the non-default rules for optimized timing. And then in the quick scripts, we supplement those with targeted NDRs on specific path groups. Uh, the interface to Red Hawk with IR driven placement, that's important. And as we get farther and farther down into the deeper technologies, it becomes more important. And then the convergent flow, um, starting with uh, the unified flow and fusion compiler where I mentioned the, the merger of compile ultra and uh, place opt into compile fusion in the fusion compiler. And then the fusion interfaces for the sign off uh, in prime time, star RC, ICV, and Red Hawk. And so this is all captured in Quick. And Quick is something you can download from SolveNet. Uh, if you're a joint customer of ARM, Synopsys, and Samsung. And we have several Quicks available. Or, oops, I jumped ahead a slide, sorry. Uh, again, the, it's uh, on the Quick is uh, the compilation of all this effort and delivers to you uh, a, a better starting point, really. We've kind of worked out the kinks. We've gone through the early versions, even the, the pre-release, you know, PDK, zero point something versions, and worked out the kinks for you. Set up the tool with the proper app options and the settings that are favorable for 5LPE and Hercules, and deliver that in the quick scripts. Um, if you download from SolveNet, it's, it's there's supplemental information, um, some presentation material and cookbooks that show kind of why Quick is the way it is, uh, explains the background. Uh, for Hercules, it's not a release core, so you have to contact Synopsys. Um, we'll, we'll share that with you. It's not, we can't upload it an uh, unreleased core onto SolveNet. So just contact Synopsys, and we'll work something out. Uh, there's a long history uh, going back for the Quick Scripts for A5753, all the way up to the Neoverse N1 and the the A77 that Leah mentioned earlier, uh, these are all, all available on SolveNet. And let me just point at the bottom there, the link is synopsis.com slash arm. And if you, let me just reiterate one more time, uh, the quick is, is the delivery method for the collaboration between our companies. And that captures the scripts, it captures the Fusion compiler settings, it captures Hercules and the ARM IP, uh, the POP IP, and captures 5LPE. So it's all rolled into Quick and gives you an example to start from. Thank you. <laughs>